Andrew Steer, who is the director of the Metropolis Ensemble, launched a series called the Resident Artist Series to have one of the Metropolis artists curate and to put together a project with new commissions. And this is the second time that Metropolis is putting this together and Andrew offered me this great opportunity. My name is Kristen Lee. I'm a violinist. The main goal of this project is to bring together music that is written for the violin and a variety of different instruments through new commissions. Each piece has a very, very different style. The idea is to really have a wide variety and a wide palette of different kinds of colors and sounds and to really experience something that's different for every, every one of them. And to really put that into consideration in choosing my five composers. Patrick Castillo is an old friend of mine, and I discovered his music through that relationship, and I always found it extremely intelligent, very sophisticated, and very deep. Okay, I'm going to warm up a little bit. Patrick's writing is very ethereal. Um, it's rather abstract. Um, it takes a little bit more to really understand and um, know what his music is really about. It's extremely complex with a lot of hidden meanings. This piece that he wrote for me is for the violin and spoken words, and Patrick will actually be speaking uh, with me on stage. Violin and spoken word are not conventional uh, elements uh, to, to encounter together. I do have a lot of experience being on stage speaking, but certainly not in this setting. I mean, I, I lecture, I teach, but Kristen and I in rehearsal have had to work out a lot of things regarding timing and just, you know, things that, that aren't uh, typically what would happen in a piece of chamber music because, I mean, I'm not reading a score. I haven't notated the spoken word part rhythmically in the way that what Kristen has uh, is rhythmic. Uh, but I've given her a bunch of um, patterns and she has, she has to track what I'm saying. And I've given her not the entire text, but spoken cues to, to have to listen out for, to signal, okay, it's okay now to move on to this next pattern. As a kind of added challenge, those are some of the most virtuosic parts uh, in the violin writing. Uh, so she's got a, some, some mental gymnastics to navigate. Just go up half step on the bottom and on the top. So keep the A sharp? Keep the A sharp, keep the E. Yeah? Oh yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. Solutions. My name is Vivian Fung. I was uh, born in Edmonton, Canada, and now presently in California, in the Bay Area. Vivian Fung was my theory, music theory teacher at Juilliard School, and I discovered her music through that relationship, and I immediately fell in love with her writing. A lot of the work that I do stems from folk music, a lot of Asian cultures. This piece that I'll be playing um, is for written for violin and guitar. I've never written for a guitar before, so um, it's something that is fascinating and, and I've been listening to a lot of flamenco writing as well as a lot of plucked instruments, the pipa from, from China, but also heavy metal influence guitar writing, so that kind of permeates into my work. She's twisting the style of pipa um, into the guitar. She's twisting the style of flamenco into the guitar and adding her own flavor to it. So you really have to switch from one kind of character to another, depending on which movement you're playing. Every piece that I write is always geared toward that performer and um, the personality of the performer, The uh, you know, with Kristen, it's about the lyricism, the uh, the virtuosic nature that she can play, but also the the tenderness that she can bring towards the music. So yeah, the guitar. Bring you some papers.
Jakub Chapinski and I have collaborated many times. He has uh, written pieces for me in the past. His harmonies are usually very consistent and um, very simple, um, but it's the subtle gestures that he incorporates into um, the phrases that really makes it very special and unique. The piece that he's writing for me is for the violin and the theremin, which he programmed himself. The idea behind this instrument is um, to be able to trigger electronic sounds with gestures. So in reality, it's not really a theremin sound. It's rather theremin used as a controller for electronic sounds. There will be a lot of sections that are open-ended where uh, Jakob and I will be interacting and sort of feeding off of each other and improvising. Working with, with acoustic instrument and electronic sounds at the same time gives me the best of both worlds, juxtaposing uh, two different worlds of, of, of sound and, and trying to merge them together. We want this piece to be alive, be to some extent unpredictable, so this will be a one-time experience and, and uh, each time we play this piece, it will be different. Why don't we try it? I mean, if you yeah, I'm curious to see what that sounds like. Okay, actually. so let me just bring it, so in case we'll try it this way, and then I bring it. And this part comes twice, that is... That's, that That's twice? Okay. Twice. All right, let's try that one. Okay, sure. My name is Shobana Raghavan. I teach and perform South Indian Carnatic classical vocal music. I wanted to add sort of like a world music element. I really loved the work that she did, so I reached out to her, and she was very, very happy to do this project with me. My piece is about thanking and at the same time invoking the blessings of the mother. And the mother in my piece could mean Mother Earth, could be your own mother. It could uh, mean a mother goddess, as in the context of Carnatic music being a very spiritual kind of music uh, back in India, but it's always invoking some god or goddess. And it could it could mean uh, anybody who takes the form of a mother who cares, who you know. It could be the husband. It could be anybody. Very nice. So here, I have to tell you where the bowing happens based on the lyrics. Okay. This one is a little bit different because it's not completely new to her, but it's completely new to me. So it's more of a learning experience on my end. Shobana actually doesn't write in Western musical notations. So basically I had to take whatever she sang for me, which she composed, but she composed in her own writing and just by memorizing in her head, and I would have to take that and notate it into my the way that I am comfortable writing. Also, because this is more authentic Indian style, I had to learn how to play the Indian violin style, which is completely different from what I'm used to. First of all, we have to detune the instrument. Um, I have to sort of hold it the quote-unquote wrong way, and I'm not supposed to play anything really quite in tune, and so I had to just learn the way that they would play in their music uh, completely different minds. So, so that was really something that was very challenging, but also really interesting and, and really fun too. Sorry. <laughs> this particular music, I want them to feel like it's a search within. Do good, be kind, all of that should be reflected by listening to the music itself. There is an inherent silence and a pause, so there is the tension and release that actually completely uh, binds music to how life itself is. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. See you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye, children. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Say bye bye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 Take care. Andy Akiho is a composer that I've heard about for a very long time, but actually hadn't met in person. Um, I was very familiar with his music, and I thought it would be perfect for this project. So I reached out to him and wrote him an email. He got back to me right away, and he was very excited about the project. Andy's style is very rhythmic and um, usually very fast-paced. Um, 
He has a lot of jazz influence in his writing, so his harmony is very jazzy. He's a percussionist, that's his main uh, instrument. And so I think he really thinks like a percussionist. For this project, Andy is writing for the violin and the steel pan. And we have Ian Rosenbaum, who is one of the greatest young percussionists out there right now, to join me on the steel pan for this piece. I love the way steel pan blends with violin. I came up with all these like little motives in the pan, and I just, I just strung different ideas together and kept kept writing the same measure over and over, but every time I write it, it would change a little bit, and then that would spawn something else, and I didn't want to think in a key, or I didn't set any rules in this one. You know, like, it's just like two people talking. They're saying kind of the same things, but, but they meet together and, and, like, say exactly the same thing sometimes, and then they, they go off. It's like controlled blabbering. Is that a word? It's definitely going to be a crowd pleaser. Um, it's very fast and it's requiring a lot of practice. <laughs> One of the greatest things about um, new music and premieres is the fact that no one has ever heard it before and it's a completely new experience for everybody. So the audience and the musicians get to hear it in its purest form. It's been an incredible journey for all of us and the process has been extremely rewarding. Um, I'm so pleased with every single piece that's been written. I feel very, very personally connected to every one of these pieces and to every one of these composers because I've built a strong relationship and friendship with every one of them. When we actually get to perform them on stage um, and play for the audience, I think it really resonates with them. And um, I can't wait to share these five new incredible works with the world.